honesty, passion, experience. It's Timberwolves Explosion, hosted on the Paladino Live Network. And now, your host, Paladino Joey. Hello again, Timberwolves fans. Are you ready for the explosion of Timberwolves basketball? I am your host, Paladino Joey, or Joey Awajan. Timberwolves Explosion is available on all your favorite podcasting apps. Thank you for downloading and listening to the show as you do. It is a great pleasure to be back on board with you once again today. We're going to do a little catching up today. Don't expect a big, long show. I'm sure, obviously, as you're looking right now, the number is uh, the number of, you know, duration of the show isn't so big. I'm just kind of catching up on a few things because obviously there was a bit of Wolves news and uh, we had a big big loss in the NBA as well since the last episode. Plus, again, the first one was pretty early, the uh, draft and free agency. So Timberwolves did acquire a couple of free agents along the way that could help kind of, you know, that can help kind of bolster the depth of this team and solidify this club as a, you know, as a potential potentially deep playoff club going forward. Some Some decent signings and one where it's like an old, 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 old trade. Comes back full circle, going all the way back to the Sam Cassell <laughs> for Marco Yarich trade. Kind of cool. So we're coming back to that here. This should be a one-segment shot, this particular episode. So again, it'll be kind of like a mesh of, uh, you know, just Wolves news and fan interaction kind of all together. The Twitter account is at TWolvesEX, at TWolvesEX. That's the Twitter account on Facebook.com forward slash Tim Rules Explosion is the Facebook page. All of that will be in the show description, along with a couple of links where those are ways you could actually help the show, like joining Crypto.com, of course, clicking on the link. And also, if you can sign up for uh, Vigit and mention Paladino Live, one word as a referral. That's basically as far as I'll go with that. Um, so, yes, Tim Rules did make a couple free agent acquisitions. That could be, you know, they could be helpful. For this club going forward, obviously we talked about Bryn Forbes, we talked about Kyle Anderson, and then the whole Beasley, Beverly, blah, blah, blah. That's obviously going back in the last episode, get, acquiring Rudy Go, uh, Gobert, pardon me, all of that. Uh, Nathan Knight re-signed a two-year deal with a second-year option, so that's cool to have Nathan Knight back in the fold. Let's look at his particular contract now. Hoops hype, but we'll get the credit for that. Um... Nathan Knight, yep, so next year, 1.836. <laughs> One is the million. One million eight hundred thousand thirty-six, and then $90 after that. $36,090. And the next year is uh, non-guaranteed necessarily, so it's just under $2 million there in 1997, I guess you could say. Um, Josh Minot looked really, really, really good in the Summer League. In the first game, the next game, not so much, but generally speaking, he was pretty solid throughout the... Uh, upcoming throughout the uh, summer league, the you know, past summer league. I don't know why I'm saying upcoming. Jalen Noel, we're still waiting on a possible uh, extension there. Sounds like the parts are, uh, the two sides are not too close, according to Darren Doogie Wolfston. He's in the final year of his deal, along with uh, Nas Reed, both of them making exactly $1,930,681 $1, next year. They had to get that one in there, the 81, I don't know. So they're making the exact salary. Uh, C.J. Ellerby is coming to the Timberwolves. That's another name. That's actually not showing up in the transaction list, which is annoying. So you're going to have to dig a little bit for that. But uh, one point, well, $1,836,090. Same exactly as Nathan Knight. But Nathan Knight also has that second-year team option going forward. Um, you know, you have to, yep. And then, of course, I'm sure the Wolves will exercise the Anthony Edwards one, but he'll probably get a extension after that anyway. That, again, that would be that fourth year, how they, you know, they exercise the option to keep the guy. Same with Jaden McDaniels and blah, blah, blah. Those guys are going to make some money going forward. Kyle Anderson's making just under $9 million this year and just over $9 million next year. Torian Prince is making basically seven point three this year and seven point six next year. Those are two-year deals for Kyle Anderson and Torian Prince, of course, you know, those extensions. We talked about Torian Prince and Kyle Anderson. Torian Prince actually was re-signed before the NBA Finals were over. Um... So there's a bit of that. Pardon me for smacking the lips way too much. I'm sure that annoys some of you, and I deeply apologize. So I'm going to kind of... Also, Josh Okogie uh, agreed to a one-year deal with the Phoenix Suns. Josh Okogie, who actually had some of his best games against the Phoenix Suns, uh, pestering the likes, 
of some of my favorite players on that team. Yeah, we'll just move on from that. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I want them to win just for the fans. I don't really like the players over there very much. Some of them kind of bug me, but you probably can guess who. C.J. Ellaby has been brought in. Former Portland Trailblazer, still super duper young. Gosh, she's only like 22 years of age. Played a couple years of the Blazers, 88 games. Field goal percentage of 39, three point percentage of 27.5. A six foot six, 200. He's making exactly the same amount as Nas Reed. In case I said it, I'm not sure if I did, but yeah, making the exact amount, 1.9. Uh, well, 1 million dollars. Uh, he's actually making the same as yep, yep. Nathan Knight, not Nas Reed. Nas Reed and Jalen Noel are making the same amount. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> got them all together. But, of course, only two years so far for C.J. Ellaby. Again, 22 years of age. He averaged, let's see, most recently he averaged almost six points a game and about four rebounds, an assist and a half. So a little bit little bit going on there. Again, he's more of a depth guy, shooting guard type of player, shooting guard, maybe some small forward. Only 30 games as a rookie, only six and a half minutes in that season in 2019-2020. Or, no, 2020-2021, sorry. Um, yeah, very minimal action there. But we'll see. He was a second-round pick, 46th overall to the Portland Trailblazers. Grover Cleveland STEM High School. Grover Cleveland STEM High School. So, very interesting there. All right. Well, <laughs> we'll see what happens. And he played for Washington State, the Washington State Cougars. Washington State Cougars are talking about his high school uh, for some reason, more than the college. That's interesting. But, um, yep, C.J. Ellerby, Ellerby, I keep wanting to say Ellerby, but it's Ellerby. Um, we already talked about Bryn Forbes last episode. Wendell Moore's contract has been signed and blah, blah, blah. Uh, obviously, you know, small amount right now, 2.3. Timberwolves, what's next on the list here? Just a couple of things. Yep, yeah, Benzo was talking about uh, the young man, Josh Minot. I hope I'm saying the name right. I was, yeah, I was saying he has legitimate energy. But, yeah, he can play, too. He definitely can play, and his energy translates to his game. Uh, Benzo, out of the Bronx, says, yeah, man, his energy is unreal. He hyped the team or himself up after every play. Normally stuff you see for the 15th man on the bench, not the best player on the floor. And he was the best player on the floor through most of that. Wendell Moore, a little bit kind of more low-key, unfortunately. But there's something there. Uh, great share here by Random Hoops. That would be Reese Pedretti, also known as Pumpa. And, man, he says, who doesn't love a Googs highlight? Uh, yep, mentioning me in that tweet. And you get to see Tom Googly, Oogly, Oogly, baby. Doug West to Tom Googly out. It doesn't get much better than that. Basically, West just kind of, you know, obviously did the entry pass. Googly out attack from the baseline. Kind of did a bit of an up and under. How do you describe it? Again, and that's my kind of game. I love attacking from the baseline. But his was a little bit uh, more fancy there. He was getting fouled and was able to kind of scoop the ball up. Tom Grugliotta, that is, as he was in the air. A little, little bit of Jordan action there. No, <laughs> obviously from a power forward player who I've always thought was underrated. I couldn't believe. See, Mackey, Phil Mackey of Score North, they started uh, Flagrant Howells just recently. Him and, uh, him and another guy, a buddy there, started Flagrant Howells. Um, I couldn't believe. See, they did a top 15, like, they basically like three lineups, like the greatest Timberwolves in history, so to speak, of uh, the lineups. They left Gugliotta out. How? I know the Wolves are rich in power forward history, but they're not that rich. Tom Gugliotta was the first all-star for the Minnesota Timberwolves. How in the how in the bleepity bleep does he not make at least the third team? How? Um, the first team you can't really disagree with. What was it? Like Carl Anthony Towns, Kevin Garnett on the first team. Jimmy Butler at small forward. Yuck, but it is what it is. See, if you can put Jimmy Butler, who was here for like a year and a half, a year and a half, and made a complete jackass of himself, you leave out Gugliotta and Stephen Marbury? Okay, sure. Yeah, sure. Yep, okay, that makes sense. Not. So, great show. And they don't need my help. I need theirs more than they need mine because they're probably doing pretty good, and it's a good show. But... Gugliotta and Marbury getting left out? Come on. Like, Marbury, I can understand. He was the biggest jackass of all time. But, I mean, I would almost want to leave Butler out as well. But, yes, Butler, I understand. Uh, I understand Jimmy Butler being on the roster. So, if you want to be fair, then Googs should be there, and so should frickin' Marbury, as much as I hate him. Um, what was uh, shooting guard? 
the one of the one of them was Anthony Edwards. The other was Wally Zerbiak. Uh, Phil Mackey put Wally Zerbiak shooting guard. I'm going to go with Anthony Edwards already. And then yes, Sam Cassell for point guard at the moment. Yep, Sam Cassell did more for this club than Marbury did in the short time he was here. Uh, that wonderful team and the good playoff run that I you know, the only playoff run we ever had. And it's not trying to be a jerk or sarcastic, but um, so I agree with the lineup that uh, I actually agree with the lineup that. Uh, yeah, they're the co-host. That's bugging me. I don't know why I don't know his name. Um, but I'd, I'd actually never heard of him before. That's why he's like a newer piece. And he's only on that show when it comes to Score North. Kyle. Okay, well, just say Kyle. Yep, Kyle. That's his name. So uh, I agree with his first lineup. The next one was, I think they both had the same lineup. Uh, Gobert and Kevin Love. I agree with that. I agree with Gobert and Kevin Love. Gobert center, even though he hasn't played a game yet, but at least put him there right away. At center, Kevin Love at power forward. I can agree with that, definitely. Uh, small forward, I think one of them at Wiggins. I can't remember which one. Or was that the third team? It doesn't really matter. Uh, one of them, at, yeah. It must have been Kyle put Wally there and Wiggins. Maybe uh, maybe uh, um, Mackie put Wiggins, I think. That could be. Not that I need to make a big thing about this, but... I think both of them put Rubio at point guard and left Marbury out. And then had, I can't remember who the third center was. Now that's driving me nuts. And they left Tom Gugliotta out. They had Christian Leitner. I believe both of them had Christian Leitner as the third power forward. Okay. Um, you know what I would do? Leitner played center. You know, in the later stages that he was with the Timberwolves, and he played a lot better when the Wolves actually put him at center. He scored a lot more points. He was more of an offensive force at the center position. So if it's me, the third team is absolutely Lehner and Googs. Absolutely Lehner and Googliata. Um, I would have Wally as, gosh, it's tough. It's tough. It's so tough. Shooting guard, obviously Anthony Edwards should be number two. So I don't know. I don't know where to go with it. But it, it's like not super important that I need to get into this because this was their show and I could kind of maybe organize this better at another time, but it was just something to get into, and maybe I'll just rat them, maybe I'll just roll them out in my next episode. I was even thinking of doing that, but I just didn't, didn't just now, so I apologize. But I, I just the whole point is I think Gugliotta should be on at least the third team, and Marbury should at least be probably the number two point guard, right? I think both of them had D'Angelo Russell as the number two point guard. Really? Or, or no, Terrell Brandon. Terrell frickin' Brandon. Terrell Brandon. Really? Really? Did you watch? I mean, I could see Terrell on the third team. Maybe. Maybe. The, boy, I think you got to go with uh, Sam Cassell, Marbury, and then D'Angelo Russell should be on the third team. And yeah, that's what should happen. Terrell Brandon could play, and he was tough to play against. And even Marbury said how tough to play against he was. Yeah, when he was on Cleveland. When he was on the Cleveland Cavaliers, not on the Timberwolves, Terrell Brown was very tough to play against when he was on the Cleveland Cavaliers. I think this is one of the things I've been wanting to get into, and been, it's been itching at me. Um, Terrell Brown was great on Cleveland, but on the Wolves, uh, he was good. He was good. I don't know. Uh, the Wolves, believe it or not, since Stefan Marbury have had a very rich history at the point guard position. Obviously, again, Ricky Rubio. Um, you could put him on the third team, but I think Marbury's got to be on there, too. I hate what he did. I hate what he did to this team, to this fan base. You know, I, I hate it. It's complete bull crap. But at the same time, come on. You know, he's got to be on one of those teams. Otherwise, again, I, I understand your frustration, your anger, but then leave Butler out too if you're going to do that. So that would be my take there. Apologize if I'm going on way, way, way too long. But again, that's part of what the catch-up episodes are all about is to kind of get into little rants and raves about things, and this was a rant, I guess you could say. So, apologize if I drug that out a little too far. Tanae Brown, again, Reese Pedretti was is out of Brisbane, Australia. Benzo's out of the Bronx. Uh, John Krasinski was saying it's in the works about the press conference for Mr. Uh, Rudy Gobert at the time, because it finally happened. That, would, that took a little while, but I suppose it was right around July 4th that that was going on. So, I mean, what, what are you going to do? Um... It was kind of like the Parisian Suter signings many, many years ago, 10 years ago with the Minnesota Wild, how it was July 4th fireworks. 
And, you know, Dobert was acquired, I believe, on July 1st. So that's about July 4th fireworks as well. Mad, March Madness, at March Madness, where is he from? He's not following. What the heck? That's mean. Uh, he's out of Punta Gorda, Florida. That <laughs> rolls right off your tongue. I'll give him a follow and see if he follows back. Please, Drew, just in case you're listening. Maths, March Madness. So what conversation was going on here? He says, I was saying I do not want losing to the Warriors to be the Timberwolves' ceiling. I want this team to crush the Warriors. It's time for them to step aside and go away once and for all. Tanae Brown, out of New Zealand, says, I feel we have the length to match up with them defensively, but how well does the Towns and Gobert pairing work off, at, off offensively? We'll see. It could work just fine. Towns may have more freedom going forward. Um, I, I, as I talked about in the last episode and in the past, talking about Nikola Pekovic, when he was a short time with the Timberwolves at center again with Carl Anthony Towns, Carl Anthony Towns flew, he soared like an eagle out there as a power forward. He kind of moved around as much as he wanted. He blocked more shots. He got more rebounds. He attacked the rim more. And he was free, was more free to shoot threes. It was a little bit of everything. So it was a beautiful, beautiful thing. You saw the true versatility of Carl Anthony Towns. Um, so it was awesome. And he did block more shots because he, he was a little more free rather than just kind of plug in the middle, so to speak. Where Gobert is just a natural shot-blocking center. So, uh, again, that could work interestingly. We'll see what happens in Gobert and D'Angelo Russell are a perfect match. That's another reason why Tim Conley wasn't in a huge rush to dump away uh, D'Angelo Russell. We'll see what happens. Unfortunately, the two sides aren't close on an extension either. So Jalen Noel and D'Angelo Russell, that's a conversation going into next offseason and into the regular season as well, possible trades. You just don't know. It could happen. Um, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. So, we shall see. Uh, Maz jumps in and says, this is the diametric opposite of the concern. And then, Tanae said about what I would say, how's that? Like, what was that again? <laughs> what, what do you mean? Uh, and it's no offense. Um, March Madness out of Florida says, offensively, Gobert is like a turbocharged version of Vanderbilt. Same horizontal spacing concerns. Yes, but entirely entirely more vertical spacing better screen setting look at O rating of any Jazz lineup with him on the floor concern with Golden State Warriors equals Cat plus Rudy closing out on the shooter's D. Interesting thoughts. Interesting thoughts that's actually pretty well said um, that's actually really well said. Thank you uh, <laughs> it's a good point and uh, thank you it's pretty cool. We'll keep moving. I'm sorry uh, let him have the floor with that one. Ah, uh, definitely. So, <laughs> Chloe Cat. Chloe Cat followed me. That's the end of Twitter. At T-Wolves EX, at T-Wolves EX. Facebook again, that Josh Akogi agreed to the one-year deal with the Phoenix Suns, per report, per report. And then I shared something I probably didn't mean to, like a big blue screen of God knows. I'm going to click on it and see what it is. <laughs> it's nothing. Yeah, I think my phone accidentally clicked and I tried to delete it and it didn't delete. Can you go away now this time? It still didn't delete it. What the? Facebook is stupid. You know, they'll, Facebook will delete your posts and suspend you and do this and that, but you can't delete your posts even if it's like a complete accident. Okay, there it goes. Makes perfect sense though, by the way. Good lord, I'm about to go on a huge rant here. Again, that's why we call it Timberwolves Explosion. It's not just the explosion of information and passion. Sometimes it's, it's an explosion of like temper tantrums too. I was saying, John Morant, you've lost a fan for life. You're one of the most idiotic, arrogant morons in the history of sports. Because he said something about, like, he would toast Michael Jordan, basically. You know, give me a break. Yeah, maybe at 60 years old. Maybe when he's, like, about 60 right now, 59. That was my response. I was a bit ticked off by it. And that's the arrogance of the young generation. But, of course, uh, Wayne Hunt would tell you that he was, yeah, that you need to read the article. So I apologize a bit for that. That it's more like, it's not necessarily... All over the all over the shard, or all, all over the place. There, Wayne Hunt says, "Classic Timberwolves fans." Um, Tony Brown says, "Can't stand that clown." 
and I was saying me neither, all, all, and crapping all over Jordan is like the dumbest thing ever. It's real easy to say when Michael's 59 years old, just imagine taking him on at 29. Yeah, and I think it would be pretty bad. Uh, Nathan Connor says, still salty? He's like, yeah, I'm salty too, Nathan, just in case. Yep. Uh, okay, here we go. There it is, the Austin Rivers signing. And I was saying, ironic to think that the Sam Cassell and a protected first-round pick for Marco Jaric, Marco Jaric, no, Marco Jaric, trade way, way back in the day has come full circle all these years later. That protected pick was Austin, Austin Rivers to the Charlotte Hornets, just when they were becoming the Charlotte Hornets at the time. After all these years, it was protected. It finally was able to become a player. And, um, yep, it was protected for, for years, as, including, like, the whole Mark Madsen jacking up threes so the Wolves could tank. It was just that one game, because if the Wolves, <coughs> pardon me, finished in a certain standing, we would lose the pick. So we kind of were acting kind of stupid and childish, and Garnett hated it. And then Glenn Taylor said that Garnett tanked, and then Garnett got really, really, really mad. And It's okay to get mad at Glenn Taylor for saying something that he shouldn't have. But it's not okay to hold a grudge for like 500 years. Like, yeah, that's what I don't like. Garnett holds grudges, which is annoying. Next, uh, Adrian Wojnowski also, uh, what he said on Twitter at the time was, free agent guard Austin Rivers has agreed on a one-year deal with the, Timber uh, the Minnesota Timberwolves. His agents Dave Spahn and Aaron Mintz of CAA Sports tell ESPN, Rivers played 67 games for Denver a year ago where new president Tim Conley signed him in consecutive seasons. Yep, so Austin Rivers, kind of like that's just how it goes. Uh, you, you have your guys, and sometimes your guys end up following you because the opportunity is there for both sides to uh, come to an agreement. Isn't that cute how that all came together? Didn't I put toge that together nicely until... I stuttered just now. That was embarrassing. But Austin Rivers on the Wolves after all those years. He comes to the Timberwolves now at about 30. A little under $3 million. 2.9 mil, basically, with the $5,000 and something added. That's exciting. Um, it's extremely exciting, actually. No, uh, Austin Rivers, though, he, he provides a little bit of that, uh, you know, provides us a little bit of that toughness off the bench. Not going to be as exciting as Patrick Beverly, but you already have you already have Jordan McLaughlin, though. And you do have Jalen Noel, who's going to get more minutes, no doubt about it. Uh, and, of course, you have Danzel Russell. Austin Rivers has been in the NBA for quite a bit. It was the Pelicans. It wasn't the Charlotte Hornets. No, it was the it was the Hornets, wasn't it? I remember him wearing the Hornets. I don't know why it says Pelicans. Did he play... Oh, it was the New Orleans Hornets. That's why. That's why I'm so confused. I apologize. It was the New Orleans Hornets, and then they became the Pelicans right at that time. That's why. Yep, that's why. They were, they were, yep, yep. He started off with the New Orleans Pelicans, and it was with the Clippers for quite a bit, and a lot of that time was with his dad, and then ultimately with the... And he became a little bit of a journeyman, but still played significant roles everywhere he's gone, him being Austin Rivers, of course. Averaging mostly in the 20s in minutes. Uh, the least amount of minutes he ever averaged was 19.3 with the Clippers in 2014 after being traded from the Bloody Pelicans around that time. 19.4 with the Pelicans also in 2013. So he had a little less playing time around that age. And it kind of creeped up with the Wizards in the later stages of the Clippers up into about 30, 30 minutes a game or so approximately. And he's been in the mid-20s pretty much ever since on average. Uh, last season, Austin Rivers averaged only six points a game, only 1.3 assists, so not great numbers, obviously. Not a major role. Three-point percentage has been all over the place, but over 30 the entire time, at least, uh, except for 2014 with the Pelicans, to about 28%. Uh, looks like he had a career high, or close to a career high with the Nuggets, just about 37.5. Yeah, 37.8 with the Clippers, in 2016, uh, 17, pardon me. And then 37.5 for the Nuggets in 2020, 2021. And then last season, 34.2 from downtown. But generally speaking, his overall field goal percentage, only 41.8 for his entire career. Three more percentage for his career. Just a smidgen under 35%. So again, definitely not known for offense. He's more of a defense kind of gritty guy, but also can play offense. He's capable of it. Born in Santa, Monica, Kelly, Orny, uh, 
just turned 30 years of age on August 1st, just like last week, basically, well, two weeks ago now. And, of course, huh, Grady Rivers and Betty Rivers are his grandparents. Interesting, and, of course, we know who his dad is. That would be Doc Glenn, Doc Rivers, former New York Nick, Atlanta Hawk, Atlanta Hawk before that, of course. Um, and, yeah, world champion Boston Celtics coach. Some good teams with the L.A. Clippers, but didn't get over the hump there. Made a little bit of, I don't know, well, just, yeah, rub, let's just say, uh, I don't know. He got, he got a little too political, in my opinion, at times, but whatever. I got, well, what am I going to do? I, I, I get that way, too. But, and let's just say we might not be on the same side on some things, but it is what it is. <laughs> and on, a, on some things, maybe, but some things, no. Other than that, Mrs. Lincoln, how was the play? Uh, were the uh, AJ Lawson? Yep, yeah, we got to get to the other two signings real quick. Two way contracts, unfortunately, for both these guys. I think one of them at least deserves some some time. AJ Lawson, what is his contract status? Age, what's his status? AJ Lawson, yep, so both him and Eric Paschal. Uh, their options for 1.7 million next year. And right now it's 508, like minimum type contracts. Interesting. Those are, yeah, but that's a two way deal. So it could be more than qualifying offer, possibly the next year for both AJ Lawson and Eric Paschal. Paschal, I like. And he was somebody that was compared to one of the prospects going into the draft as well. Let's look at AJ Lawson quick first. That was before he was undrafted. And he's coming in out of South Carolina. Yep, this one is the one that's the, this is the college free agent. Okay, I got him mixed up with the other player. A.J. Lawson is a college free agent out of South Carolina coming in from Brampton, Canada. Interesting. <laughs> Brampton, yeah, yeah, I know where Brampton is. Yep, I believe that's in uh, Manitoba if I remember correctly. Brampton is like, no, yep, up there in Manitoba. Uh, but he played in South Carolina. Go figure. <laughs> he's, a, he's a shooting guard at six foot six, one seventy seven. Very skinny guy. Again, coming out of South Carolina. Uh, we'll see what happens. I at least has a chance to be in uh, at least one of the uh, you know one of the guys that can come in and help, or of course play and play with Iowa for the season as well. Lawson played 81 games for South Carolina. Averaged a, averaged over 14 points a game, two assists, four rebounds. Field goal percentage about 41%, so not the most exciting thing I've seen in the history of my life. Three-point percentage about 35. Free throw percentage just a smidgen under 70%. We'll see. Uh, obviously, again, young, developing, this and that, and I don't know, played a couple, well, young, young enough anyway. He played three seasons with South Carolina, giving him a shot here. Uh, I don't have a whole lot more to say at the moment with A.J. Laws. I wish I could see him more. Maybe we'll talk about him more in the preseason, how he looks. and Well, it's, it's an opportunity, so let's see if he grabs it. Uh, as for the other guy, Eric Paschal, he's definitely a guy who could be a rotation player with the Timberwolves, I think. I think he could be. Um, I like what he's done in his career so far. He was a second-round pick, 11th by the Warriors in 2019. Gosh, he's already... Shoot, he's already like 20, 25, 25 years of age. Kind of a big, burly, tough, 255-pound, 6'6 guy. Big, burly guy. You know, obviously plays kind of a bigger game. As a rookie, he was pretty damn good. It was a crappy Warriors team, but hey, and I, and I remember him very well on that club, actually. <laughs> with those crazy back-and-forth games with uh, D'Angelo Russell. Remember how that went to overtime and guys had like 40 points and stuff. I believe it was Wiggins and uh, D'Angelo Russell. Both in the 40s, interestingly enough, when you consider they were both in the, a part of that trade. Eric Pascal can shoot threes a little bit. He actually got to 37% last year in 50 games. His minutes have diminished throughout his career, unfortunately. 27 with that crappy Warriors club, but and then things dropped down the next year as the Warriors got a little better. 17 minutes, and then only 12 last year with the Utah Jazz. Again, that's the guy Kai Kai came in to help out here from Utah. Be like, uh, be one of the assistant GMs. About five points, no, six points a game this past season, but does play. He does play. He played 60 games as a rookie, 40 games uh, last year, oh, well, two years ago, and then 58 games last year. He finds his way in the lineup. His actually field goal percentage has been 
very solid throughout his career. He plays close to the basket, but his three-point percentage improved last year to 37%, and his free throw percentage almost 77 throughout his career, so that's good. Rebounds the ball a little bit, but he could definitely be at least a rotation guy. We'll see coming into the season. I don't anticipate him getting a ton of minutes early, but at very least, at very least, as guys get hurt or sick or something, Eric Paschal will play significant minutes with the Wolves at times, I gotta think. With that said, is there, okay, let's get to the conversation regarding the whole situation with that crazy trade years ago with Sam Cassell and Austin, uh, well, ultimately the player ended up becoming Austin Rivers. It was a protected draft pick. Tanae Brown out of New Zealand says, how do you remember that? Superior Wolves knowledge you have, Joey. Thank you very much. I was saying, I'm just one of those crazy people that remembers details. Uh, Fred Mithen locally says Yarich was garbage. Was was garbage. Yarich was garbage. Yeah, but I get it. And I was saying, yes, he was. He was garbage. Yarich was garbage. Yeah, I agree. Bill Russell. Bill Russell, 11-time NBA champion, died of, at the age of 88 last week. And, well, within the last week and a half or so, um... Mm, wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, all the cool things he would say later on in his career. I still remember the Michael Jordan video where it was basically the end of uh, Michael Jordan's career with the Bulls. Obviously, he came back with the Wizards after that a couple of years later and blah, blah, blah. But I still remember so well what Bill Russell said at the end of that video. And he said the best thing about Michael Jordan is he was determined to be Michael Jordan every night. He didn't just come in certain nights and just kind of throw his sneakers down and stay and just kind of take the night off. He was determined to be Michael Jordan every night. And Bill Russell was determined to be Bill Russell every night. There's no doubt about it. Uh, absolutely phenomenal. And he had a hilarious laugh. I remember when he came on <laughs> Paul Allen locally here, PA, the Paul Allen Show, however you want to call it, the Paul Allen Project, KFAN. He's been on the air for 20 years now, uh, over 20 years now, but in Paul Allen's case. Uh, Bill Russell went on that show one time, and there was, it was amazing. And I still remember, like, wow, he's a, he has a funny laugh. <laughs> like that. <laughs> I can't really imitate it real well, but it was funny. And then at the end of the episode, Bill Russell said, hey, did you catch the guy? And then Paul Allen said, what guy? Bill Russell said, the guy who stole your razor. <laughs> it's just funny how he, it's just kind of, it's just so old school, but cool at the same time, because P.A. was unshaven for like a couple days. He was kind of starting to grow a beard. And it was just funny the way Bill Russell just kind of jumped in and said, hey, did you catch the guy? <laughs> so, I mean, you know, showing a bit of that personality. Uh, he'd been on Barrero a couple times as well. Pretty accessible for what he was. And he's the kind of guy who had rings for his toes. He didn't have rings for his thumbs. Or, well, he had one for his big toe, and he had two rings for the thumbs. So it doesn't get much better than Bill Russell. In fact, it really doesn't. A guy that averaged 22 rebounds a game in his career. 22 rebounds a game in his career. How many people have done that? Nobody. That's un freaking believable The only guy I can imagine is Will Chamberlain. So, again, that's another conversation for another day about who are the true goats of all time. Um, but Bill Russell, very much appreciated. Gone, but not forgotten. We will give Bill Russell a moment of silence. And with that, I'm looking to wrap up this episode of Timberwolves Explosion. Just figured I'd get caught up quick since I had a little bit of free time, uh, you know, waiting for somebody. So figured I would do that, just do a short show here. And I wanted to catch up to some of these details. Apologize if I wasn't <laughs> as, as sharp as I might be. This was kind of a spur-of-the-moment thing. So, again, <laughs> I apologize. Uh, but at the same time, again, this was more of a catch-up show. Do check out uh, State of the Timberwolves 2022 if you haven't yet. Or, of course, again, uh, Draft and Free Agency 2022. Do check those out if you haven't checked them out yet. Those are very good quality shows. I uh, highly recommend it. Thank you so much for listening to this show as well. Again, follow the... Twitter account at TWolvesEX, uh, Facebook.com forward slash Timberwolves is the Facebook page, and the links will be in the show description. With that said, tell your friends about the show. Give a positive rating on Apple Podcasts, uh, Stitcher, Spotify, or Audible, if you could. I'd really, really appreciate it. With that said, again, tell your friends about the show. 
Hope you have a wonderful rest of the summer. Those of you locally, there isn't a whole lot left, so get to any pool or lake while you can. And those of you in Australia, well, summer's right around the corner, and I, I envy you in that sense because it's a good feeling when you get to ha have the spring coming around again. It's an awesome feeling. Fall coming is not nearly as exciting, in my opinion, except for the fact that sports are going to be coming back. The b basketball, hockey, football, it's a lot of fun. With that said, take care, and we'll talk to you very soon.